Well, now we know Mike Pence was listening to our public service announcement here one month ago, telling everyone in the White House to lawyer up. The first person in the White House to hire a private criminal defense lawyer was the president's son-in-law, Jared Kushner, who actually hired Jamie Gorelick last year during the transition. Jamie Gorelick was the deputy attorney general in Bill Clinton's Justice Department and a Hillary Clinton presidential campaign supporter. The latest breaking news report tonight is from the Washington Post revealing that the special prosecutor is investigating Jared Kushner's business dealings. Previous Washington Post reports had indicated that the special prosecutor was looking at the business dealings of Trump associates, but this is the first confirmation that Jared Kushner is under investigation. Sari Horowitz, one of the reporters who broke that Washington Post story, will join us in a moment. The news that Vice President Pence has hired a criminal defense lawyer and that Jared Kushner is under investigation comes 24 hours after the Washington Post reported last night that the president himself is now the subject of an obstruction of justice investigation by the special prosecutor. The Washington Post's reporting last night was based entirely on anonymous sources. It was followed by a New York Times report also based on anonymous sources that was a bit more tentative about whether the president was the subject of an investigation. Then this morning at 6.55 a.m., a named source came forward to confirm that the president is under investigation. President Trump tweeted, they made up a phony collusion with the Russian story, found zero proof, so now they go for obstruction of justice on the phony story. Nice. With that nice tweet, the president himself confirmed that he is indeed under investigation and once again proved to every Washington law firm that rejected him as a client that they were right to do so. President Trump is the most publicly unmanageable public official as a client that any Washington criminal defense lawyer has ever seen. And so President Trump is stuck with the same old New York lawyer who has been on the losing side of some of Donald Trump's best known cases, the Trump University fraud case, in which President Trump ended up having to pay $25 million to the students that he defrauded, the baseless libel cases he brought against Bill Maher and against former New York Times reporter Timothy O'Brien, those kinds of cases. Mike Pence cannot afford a high-priced trial lawyer who charges hundreds of dollars an hour, but politicians like Mike Pence can usually use campaign funds to pay for criminal defense lawyers in situations like this, but to do that, Mike Pence would have to have a campaign fund that was completely under his control, which Mike Pence did not have until the day after I issued that public service announcement here to everyone working in the White House that they all need lawyers. The day after I said that, and I'm not saying it's because I said that, it's just a really nice coincidence. The day after I said that, Mike Pence established a political action committee to raise his own campaign funds. At the time that he did that, I said that it seemed kind of peculiar that the vice president would do that. And it could be read as a clue that the vice president thought that maybe he wouldn't be running for re-election as vice president in his next political campaign, that perhaps something would intervene and change his status, something like, say, impeachment, and that maybe he would be running at the top of the ticket, and he needed to be in control of his own campaign funds, needed to plan for that possibility. So he established his own campaign fundraising arm. And now, tonight, that seems very naive to me, now that the Washington Post has reported that Mike Pence has spent the last several weeks interviewing lawyers before making his final decision to hire Richard Cullen, a former federal prosecutor. Richard Cullen can be paid with whatever money Mike Pence raises for that fundraising pack that he created on May 17th. We now know that establishing that fundraising pack was a clue that Mike Pence was shopping for a private and very expensive criminal defense lawyer. We don't know the vice president's full schedule for tomorrow, but we do know that at 5 p.m. he is scheduled to have a fundraiser for his pack in Indianapolis. A $5,000 contribution to Mike Pence tomorrow will allow you to attend a so-called Leadership Committee roundtable. As many seats at that table as people who hand over $5,000.
a $2,500 contribution to tomorrow's fundraiser will give you access to a host reception, exclusive reception. And just a little $1,000 contribution allows you to attend the much bigger reception that everyone gets to go to. And the $1,000 contribution will pay for maybe an hour of Mike Pence's criminal defense lawyer's time. Joining us now by phone is Sari Horowitz, one of the Washington Post reporters who broke tonight's story on Jared Kushner. Uh, Sari, your reporting is that Jared Kushner's business dealings are now specifically uh, the, the attention of the special prosecutor. Yes. Um, good evening. Yes, uh, the Washington Post had previously reported that investigators were looking at meetings that Kushner held uh, with the Russians in December, first with Russian Ambassador Sergei Kislyak, then with the head of a state-owned Russian bank. Um, at that time, it wasn't clear if the FBI was investigating his business dealings, as it is with they are also looking at the financial dealings of other Trump associates, like Michael Flynn, the former National Security Advisor, Paul Manafort, former campaign chairman, etc. But we have now learned that they are indeed investigating the finances and business dealings also of Jared Kushner. Sari, what does this mean now about the scope of the investigation, which was begun as an investigation of Russian interference into the election? I think it's expanding. And we saw that uh, last night in our report where we uh, reported, we published a story saying that the special counsel was looking at obstruction of justice, possible obstruction of justice of the president of the United States. You can see that is growing from a, it started as a counterintelligence investigation and then into an investigation about possible collusion coordination between Trump associates and Russian officials to interfere in the 2016 election. And now we can see it's going into the area of finance and obstruction. Sorry, I want to you know, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I just want to comment on what, what you read from Rod Rosenstein, the statement that went out tonight, which I found fascinating a bit bewildering. I've never quite seen anything like it. Um, because it's interesting that we, and I'm a beat reporter, we check our stories with the Department of Justice. Uh, we run them by, and in this case with the special counsel, we go through, we tell them what we're writing, we give them an opportunity to push back or to tell us where we might be wrong, um, and they uh, are just repeatedly declining to comment. Yeah, so let's go through that for a second. I, I just want to read Rod Rosenstein's uh, statement again because it is the breaking news of this hour. He issued a statement, which is very unusual for the uh, Attorney General, Deputy Attorney General in his position to do with this ongoing investigation. Uh, but there have been a series of leaks, especially uh, published by the Washington Post in the last couple of days, that he seems concerned about. He, he issued a statement tonight at 9.22 p.m. saying, Americans should exercise caution before accepting as true any stories attributed to anonymous officials, particularly when they do not identify the country, let alone the branch or agency of government with which the alleged sources supposedly are affiliated. Americans should be skeptical about anonymous allegations. The Department of Justice has a long-established policy to neither confirm nor deny such allegations. Uh, but, Sari, you're saying that there are instances when you get this information from anonymous sources that is about Justice Department business like this, where you then work on the story, you then present what you have to the Justice Department, and even though their policy is to not confirm or deny, that there are times when they might, off the record, push back very forcefully, uh, indicating to you that what you have may not be true. In, in those instances, how does that affect what you publish? Well, absolutely, there are instances like that. Um, I've been covering the Justice Department for nearly five years, um, and I've been a reporter for more than 30. And when you're working with uh, officials, especially in the Justice Department or the FBI or various departments that we cover, you have a relationship with them. You come to them not on fishing expeditions. You come to them with a story you're about to to run, and sometimes they will guide you and say, I'm not sure that's right, or they'll say, we have no problem with that. Um, and there have been many instances where they'll give us comments um, and push back. Very odd also that he talked about the country of origin. 
I'm not really sure what he's talking about there. Well, uh, are any of the sources the Washington Post uses on, on these stories about the special prosecutor's uh, investigation from another country? Well, you know, of course, I would never answer that. We never reveal our sources. We're very, we are very provide a lot of source protection. So I won't get into where our sources are from um, at all. But I, I just found it kind of an extraordinary statement to put out tonight, given that we're in touch with the Justice Department every day um, and the special counsel's office, and no one should be surprised uh, when these stories are published. And what you are willing to say is that you do give the Justice Department uh, an, an opportunity when you have stories like this about the president or about Jared Kushner to uh, to caution you against uh, publishing them uh, based on uh, their view that 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 they aren't credible. That you, you do give them that opportunity. Absolutely. Uh, on the obstruction story, we talk to public affairs people. We talk to senior officials, um, and we check to see if anyone has concerns um, and listen to those concerns. And we're not hearing them. We're just not hearing them. Sorry, Horowitz, thank you very much for joining us tonight on this important story. Really appreciate it. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.